This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 284, Three Simple Ways to Lose Fat, by Nia Shanks of niashanks.com. And I'm Dr. Neil, your very own personal narrator. Welcome to an almost Friday edition, aka a Thursday edition of Optimal Health Daily. That wasn't too confusing. This is one of five podcasts where we read to you from blogs for free so that you don't have to read them for yourself, except on Fridays. That's where I answer your questions. All right, a quick story. I think I'm too approachable. I think I give off the impression that people can say whatever they want to me and I'll just smile and not take any offense. Over the past year, I've heard the same comment said to my face at least twice. The other instance just happened, oh, this last week. To me, it's the most random comment, but what people told me is that I have a small face. What does that even mean? One of my colleagues said, oh, you just, you just have such a small face. Uh, thanks? And then just last week, a colleague of mine, who's actually a subordinate to me technically at my place of work, said, oh, I could just picture your tiny eyes and your small face when you reacted to that. I was like, what? Why are you telling me this? I'm becoming very self-conscious about my face and my appearance in general. For longtime listeners of this show, if I were to summarize what people have said to me so far, it's my triceps are too big, which makes my shoulders look small. I have a thin neck and now a small face. Awesome. I think it's good I could laugh about it at least, right? All right, today's post is a new article, but it's actually a continuation of the theme from the last two episodes. It's all about losing fat. This time we're hearing Nia Shank's take on it. So let's get right to it. I'll give you a little bit of my commentary at the end, of course, as we optimize your life. Three Simple Ways to Lose Fat by Nia Shanks of niashanks.com. I haven't talked specifically about fat loss in a while. That's mostly because I prefer to focus on getting stronger to look better. You don't have to focus on losing body fat in order to achieve it. My clients focus on getting stronger and improving their performance in the gym. Fat loss is just a great side effect. However, summer is here and that means people will be flocking to the beach, lake, and pool parties. Inevitably, it also means people will be searching for the latest and greatest and most miraculous ways to lose body fat as quickly as possible. Well, I'm not gonna tell you I've discovered the holy grail of fat loss or anything like that. Anyone who claims to have a miracle pill or program is only after your money. There is no overnight cure for fat loss. Like it or not, you will have to put in the time and work to lose body fat. I'm gonna share with you my three favorite ways to lose body fat so you can get swimsuit ready. I thrive on keeping things simple. From my training to nutrition to how I live my life in general, I am all about simplicity. When it comes to losing fat, I like to follow this same format. The simpler, the better. The three methods I'm about to share with you for increasing fat loss are incredibly simple, but they produce results. My three favorite fat loss methods. One, go for a walk every day. Now I know many people have ranted and raved that low intensity cardio doesn't work for fat loss. Well, that is not the experience my clients and I have had. Granted, we also eat smart and lift heavy weights, but adding in a few walks each week definitely helps burn some extra calories. This is the simplest method to incorporate into your current regimen. Start by going for a brisk 30-minute walk about five times per week or every day, first thing in the morning. Why first thing in the morning? Because if you wait until later in the day, you'll be more likely to come up with an excuse for not going on a walk. Get it done first thing and get on with your day. Every two weeks, Increase the time by five minutes. You can even add in a second walk later in the day. Let me give you a personal example. I was finishing up my degree at the University of Louisville a few years ago, and I lived in a small apartment. I brought my dog back with me after I visited home one weekend, and I knew I was gonna be busy walking her because she is a very high-energy dog. Each morning, I take her for about a 40-minute walk. When I came home in the early afternoon, I'd take her out again for about 15 minutes and then we'd go out for one more 40-minute walk at the end of the day. That added up to an extra 95 minutes of additional activity every day. The result, after a few weeks, I dropped a couple of pounds of fat without even trying. I usually check my weight every couple of weeks just to see how things are going, and I was shocked when I saw my weight was two pounds less than it normally had been. I had consistently weighed 122 pounds for a few months, but it was down to 120 after a few weeks of walking my dog. It wasn't my intention to lose body fat, but it happened because of all the extra activity. 
and I didn't lose any muscle either because I was still improving my performance in the gym. As I announced to everyone a couple of weeks ago, I moved again. I was living out in the country and my dog could run around all day. Now I'm back in town and once again, I find myself going for a few dog walks each day. I recorded my weight and measurements a week ago and I'll keep track of what happens from adding in the additional activity of walking every day. Like I said, going for a walk every day does burn fat if you do it consistently. But keep in mind, I am eating smart and also deadlifting, squatting, rowing, and pressing heavy every week. Two, run hill sprints. This is another favorite of mine that I really like to use during the summer. Not only is running hill sprints very effective for burning fat, but just like going for a walk outside each day, it allows you to get some fresh air and sunshine. There's also something freeing about running hill sprints. I can't really explain it, but if you've ever busted your butt running up a hill, you know what I mean. It just feels good to run. Adding in some hill sprints two to three times per week can kick your fat loss up a notch. Three, swing a kettlebell. I really like kettlebell swings, and I like them even more for fat loss. Dan John wrote an article for T Nation about how to properly perform a kettlebell swing, and also the many benefits as well. In that article, he discussed how kettlebell swings are excellent for fat loss. A simple way to incorporate swings for fat loss is to perform them multiple times per week, or even every day. Dan suggests performing a set number each day or several times per week. For example, you can have a goal of 100 swings every day. You don't perform them all at once, but in bite-sized pieces throughout the day. For example, you could perform two sets of 20 reps in the morning, two sets of 20 reps in the afternoon, and then a final set of 20 reps later in the evening. Just add the swings into your current training program and see what happens. So there you have it, my three favorite methods for losing body fat. If you want to burn some extra fat this summer, pick one of those methods and apply it consistently. You can even alternate them. Perform method number one for four to six weeks, and then method number two for four to six weeks, and then perform method number three for four to six weeks. That way, you don't get bored and your body doesn't get used to one single method. You just listened to the post titled Three Simple Ways to Lose Fat by Nia Shanks of niashanks.com. So if I were to sum up this week's episodes when it comes to losing body fat, here's really where the commonalities lie. You must be consistent. You really must exercise. You need to be careful about what you eat. And with regards to exercise specifically, think about adding a little bit more to it. Each of our bodies are built differently. What you're gonna find is some folks, especially males if you compare them to females, will lose body fat more quickly. But then there's body shape. Look around, everybody has a different body shape. And so here's what you'll see happen in reality. Let's say you and a friend of the same gender are gonna work out together and you're gonna do the exact same exercises, eat the exact same way in the exact same portions. We're keeping everything the same. The only difference is they came from a different set of parents. What you will find is, first of all, before even starting this program, your body shapes are different. But as you begin your program of exercise and eating right, your body shapes will change in different ways. You may lose fat around your wrist or your arms, and they'll start losing belly fat or fat around their hips. And you're going, what the heck? Why don't I lose body fat there? I'm only making my watch fit more loosely. Well, that's genetics. Your bodies are different. And so you can blame your parents for that. So please don't be discouraged if you're not losing fat in the areas you want them to, especially in the beginning. But I promise you, keep at it, and the body will turn to those other areas for fuel, which means eventually the body will turn to belly fat and burn some of that as fuel. But it just may take a while. And this is why consistency is so key. You have to give your body enough time to start tapping into that fat around your belly and hips, all the areas where you want it to finally disappear. So if you like Nia's methods, and if this sounds intriguing to you, hill sprints and kettlebell swings, that's fantastic. Do it if it makes you happy. But please know, there are other ways. She's talking about, you know, increasing the intensity by doing hill sprints, making you move more, working more of your large muscle groups by doing kettlebell swings. But it doesn't have to be those exercises specifically. Find those exercises you like, stay consistent, and it will work. Just give yourself some time. 
Now, tomorrow being Friday, it will be another Q&A episode. I've realized it's been a while since I've actually answered your questions. I've been a guest on a couple of other podcasts or radio shows, which I've been playing for you instead. But as a reminder, you're welcome to submit your own questions about diet, fitness, disease prevention, stress management, anything along those lines. Plus, if you send in a question, you're automatically entered into small bonus raffles to win books from us. Plus, it makes me super happy to be able to answer your questions. So to be a part of that and possibly hear your question being answered right here on the show, come by oldpodcast.com. Click the red bar along the side that says, ask a health question. Or you can always call in. The phone number is 61 I Love OHD. All right, that wraps up Thursday's episode. Thank you as always for listening. Thank you for being a subscriber of the show. I hope you have a great rest of your Thursday and I'll see you on the Q&A show tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember your optimal life awaits.